Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Mr Sensible. If it's your first visit, then please make yourself at home. Grab yourself a drink and a comfy seat. This is my 100th video. As always, I would like to thank my lovely patrons for their undying support. Massive thanks to my amazing patrons, including new patrons, Chris Kelly and David Cooley. John Bunker, Sky Wizardless, and my newest patron, TC Lucas. Thank you, each and every one of you. Sleepy Warrior has done it again. He's released a video that he believes shows an experiment that disproves us being able to have our atmosphere next to space. I let Anthony know in the comments of his video that this video would be coming out. He said he's looking forward to it, but he did not want me to use gravity because obviously he doesn't accept gravity. He didn't want me to use gravity as an explanation. I won't. It's not needed. I will demonstrate to Anthony why the experiment that he has shown is malformed. It's testing the wrong thing. So Mr. Anthony Riley, at the end of this video, we've got a treat. He is going to launch his new pop career I think he's aiming for Christmas number one. We can't have that. So I may just have to challenge him for that position. So, ear defenders as well as face palm protection, please. Roll VT. It takes time because the air and the bromine molecules are colliding with themselves and each other. So what would happen if there was no air for the bromine to bump into? Well, you've got fail number one there, Anthony. That diagram showed the bromine pushing against the air, the molecules of bromine lifting and mixing with the air. There is no air in space. It's a vacuum. There's nothing for it to push against. All the air has been removed from this apparatus, apart from the flask containing bromine, which is isolated by a tap. So this experiment is not actually matching that diagram, is it? The flask contains a vacuum and not air above bromine. But let's carry on. So we've got vacuum in the flask, like space, and we've got a smaller flask with bromine in, which is not like our atmosphere, as it's not got a gradient. And the bromine will be right next to vacuum. Proceed, Mr. Riley. Open the tap and it spreads immediately. Watch again. Well, I think it is not pop goes our model because that is not, it is not our model. Nobody has ever said you have the atmosphere, the bromine in this experiment at a pressure right next to a vacuum. We have a gradient. More later. In a vacuum, there's nowhere to collide with. The bromine diffuses much faster. Absolutely right. We have never, ever disputed that. See how slow the diffusion is when the flask is now full of air. A tufa. We have never disputed that either. But is that really your model? Are you saying that all of space is full of air? I thought it was a dome. So which is it? Is it a dome that's keeping the atmosphere in? Or is it just very, very to non-existent dispersion based on the fact that all of space is full of air? Which you've never been able to show. It takes several minutes to get just this far. Well, that's all the evidence from Anthony's video. So let's revisit those experiments and I'll break each one down. All the air has been removed from this apparatus, apart from the flask containing bromine, which is isolated by a tap. Here it is diagrammatically. On the left, we got a flask with the bromine in and on the right, a vacuum. So I've just given them nominal PSI of 10 and zero. Open the tap 
and it spreads immediately. Watch again. In a vacuum, there's no air to collide with. The bromine diffuses much faster. So as we all know, vacuums don't suck. So when that tap is open, the 10 psi of bromine expands into the flask on the right, which was vacuum, and equalises. So now we've got 5 psi of bromine throughout. I don't think anyone would argue with that, not even you, Mr Sleepy Warrior. See how slow the diffusion is when the flask is now full of air. OK, the experiment is now reset. On the left hand side we've got a flask with 10 psi of bromine and on the right a flask with 10 psi of air. It takes several minutes to get just this far. OK, I remove my tap and slowly, over a few minutes, molecules of the bromine from the 10 psi bromine flask slowly start dispersing amongst the right hand flask with 10 psi of air as the molecules bump and jostle around. So that's a breakdown of the two example experiments shown in your video, neither of which I or anyone else would disagree with. In the second, we saw the bromine slowly disperse because it's just bumping and jostling with the air molecules. You're now claiming that's your model, or well, that's the first I've heard of endless space filled with air. Uh, the first of which, the first example, was the bromine in effect right next to a vacuum. We saw it rush into that vacuum to equalise. We don't disagree with that, but it's not our model. Now, I agreed in your comment section that I wouldn't use gravity, and I won't. But I think that you'll agree, for whatever the reason, we do have a pressure gradient. We got 14.7 psi at sea level, dropping off as you raise in height. That can be easily shown. Um, witness the fact that, for instance, at the top of Everest, the pressure is much, much lower. And as you fly in an aircraft, it's lower still. I can't see how you can dispute that. Even if you dispute, why? So let's have a look at a further diagrammatic experiment to try and explain this to you. In this example, we're really, really high and the, the, the air pressure has really dropped off and it's currently at 0 0.000001 psi. And we've got bromine. On the other side, we have the vacuum again. Now what do you think will happen when we open the tap? There is bromine in there, those molecules are flying around and they are occasionally bumping into each other. Well given time, the bromine in the left container will equalise with the vacuum in the right container, giving us roughly 0 0.000005 psi but it won't be quick because there's not much bumping around. By definition, with a gradient, it will continue to get a lower and lower and lower pressure. So let's have a look at a final, final experiment. We're way higher still. The pressure is now so low, it's barely measurable. And in our diagram, we've only got three or four molecules of bromine in there. So, and if I remove the tap this time, what do you think those three or four molecules are going to do when, when they have access to the zero PSI on the other side? We know that vacuums don't suck, so the only movement from one side to the other can come from the bromine molecules themselves. So now I've removed the tap. The only reason that those bromine molecules will move from the left to the right container is if either they happen to move in exactly the right direction or if they bounce off something else like another bromine molecule which then changes their direction so that they're moving towards the right hand container. Other than that there is no reason for those molecules to move to the right. Do I hear an aha from you Mr Riley? Are you going to say well if that's the case 
we would still be losing our atmosphere. Well, we do. We lose several hundred tonnes of atmosphere a day, but there's an awful lot of it. Plus, it tends to be the lighter elements, like hydrogen and helium, that we lose. That's why they're comparatively rare in our atmosphere. But there's no need to worry, sir, because we're still talking billions of years because before it becomes much of a problem for us. This is why people keep getting exasperated with you, Anthony, because you keep trying to show this, 10 psi, for instance, next to 0 psi, and claiming it's our, it's our model, which it isn't. This would be closer to our model. So there is no comparison. So either you do not understand the difference or you're misrepresenting the argument. So that's it then, Anthony. I did not need to invoke gravity. I've shown you why you were wrong. The fact that we have a gradient is a different question. You can't deny there is a gradient. We have an explanation for why you don't. But that's enough of that. Now Anthony is going to regale, regale us with his entry that he hopes to get him Christmas number one. You definitely need ear defenders. I will respond. So as promised, here is Mr. Anthony Riley, aka The Sleeping Warrior, with his new Flat Earth release that he's hoping to get to the Christmas number one. Take it away, Anthony. Half a page of mathematics, a Bible full of lingo. Along comes scientific method, pop goes your model. I'm sorry, everyone. You can't have pressure or a gradient in an open system. Pascal's laws, your fucking science, pop goes your model. This is more threatening than any evidence you've ever presented. Nathan Sleeping Warrior, Arwen and John Stunger, we've tried and tried to tell you all, pop goes your model. Well, thank, thank you for that, uh, Sleepy. By the way, there is first aid posts available scattered around the um, studios. But Mr. Anthony Riley, you have just thrown down a gauntlet. I pick it up. I pick up your gauntlet and I slap you around the face of it. Challenge met, sir. I will challenge you for Christmas number one. Okay, Mr. Riley, it's payback time. Hit it. Half a page of skim reading, a shed load of Dunning Kruger, misunderstanding lots of things. What a silly flat earther! Sleepy goes and does it again, DFOTY contender. Unlike his singing, the earth is not flat, his science is total failure. And Oakley and all of the rest bring no evidence to the table. They wriggle, they lie, they get it all wrong. They can't show the F's not a ball. Oh yeah, booyah! You going down, boy! You're going down! Well, I like to bring you something different, and that was different. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Hit mini me down in the corner. If you don't, I might just have to play Anthony's song again. I look forward to seeing you all again next time. Take care and stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.